courtesy of Bevan VK5BD's ATV and YouTube channel, VK1WIA National News, Radio Sport and Wireless Weather is next. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Hey, good day. It's national news for week commencing December 26, 2021. The last broadcast for the good year 2021. Or was it a good year? Let's hope everybody did have a Merry Christmas and a much better 2022. So... Let's count down again this year with the New Year's Eve on-air countdown, courtesy of the Townsville Amateur Radio Club. At the third stroke, it will be 7.57, precisely. Yes, the TARC Incorporated will be counting down the minutes and seconds until 2022, utilising the original talking clock and beaming out of Townsville VHF repeater and the VK4PQ All-Star Link and Echo Link nodes at Kelso in North Queensland. To cater with the multiple time zones on the main or the Australian eastern seaboard, there will be two countdowns. One starting at 23.45 Australian Eastern Daylight Time, that's 12.45 UTC. The other at 23.45 Australian Eastern Standard Time, that's 13.45 UTC. New South Wales Emergency Operations Centre opened. Criticalcoms.com.au has reported on a new telecommunications operational centre which will support critical communications during bushfires or floods and has been opened by the New South Wales Minister for Digital and Customer Service, Victor Dominello. The Sydney-based centre gives the New South Wales Telco Authority's Telecommunications Emergency Management Unit, or TEMU, real-time information on potential impacts to telecommunications infrastructure for emergency services organisations. By tracking the likes of severe weather in real time with the Telco Authority, the centre will be able to update first responders and telecommunication carriers with accurate information on the location of critical infrastructure that might need protecting. The operational centre provides critical support during an emergency, as well as offering facilitation capabilities for long-term operations requiring significant coordination between multiple agencies such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Now on WIA National News, our President, Scott. Many thanks, Graeme, and good morning to what will be the last broadcast for 2021. This is WA President Scott Williams, VK3KJ, and I just wanted to extend a warm Christmas message to all WA members and listeners of the broadcast. It has been another challenging year for all of us, as we've done our best to manage the terrible impacts of the COVID pandemic, and of course, the tremendous impacts it's had on our families, friends, colleagues, and to all individuals in our immediate community and afar. The economic impacts are immeasurable, and we all hope 2022 will see us in a far improved position. I want to personally thank all members for your continued support of the WIA. The WIA continues to work hard in the background to support our members and the amateur radio community in as many ways as we can. There is so much more to achieve, but the contribution of all volunteers to the WIA is outstanding and your in-kind participation, however so small, is greatly appreciated. There continues to be criticism of the WIA by some of the things we do or should I say, the things that we don't do. The WIA is not perfect, far from it. It does not have endless resources and unlimited funds, but what it does have is a sense of purpose enriched by over 110 years of deep history. This purpose is driven by volunteers that care, that want to advance the Institute and are proud of the contribution they make. There is no room in our hobby for any conduct that does not advance the tremendous enjoyment that amateur radio provides to so many. It doesn't matter what mode, what band, if you make your own equipment and antennas or you purchase them commercially, the enjoyment of amateur radio is so diverse and unique to one and all. We must all strive to work together. Different clubs, different membership bodies, the AMC or the ACMA. It is irrelevant who you pledge your alliance towards as long as the net combined outcome 
is something that is beneficial to this great interest of amateur radio. On a personal note, I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a safe and prosperous New Year. Please also raise a glass and have a drink to all of those silent keys that left us this year. Our thoughts are with those families and friends. To the Board of Directors, thank you for your ongoing work. To our volunteers, we are deeply indebted. And to you, Graham, thank you for delivering an outstanding broadcast. Merry Christmas and best wishes for the new year. Scott, VK3KJ. This is Oscar Picky 3 dx December, Youngsters on the Air Month. Again, in December of 2021, several young operators are active around the world with Yoda as a suffix in the call sign. The idea for this is to show the amateur radio hobby to youth and to encourage youngsters to be active on the ham radio waves. Feel free to make a QSO with the youngsters. They are happy to get some attention and exchange some information. Licensed and unlicensed youth will be making QSOs. Be aware, this could be their first radio contact ever and give them a chance to experience a possible new hobby. For WA National News, this is Oscar, Vicky 3 tx Thanks, Oscar. And as we continue WIA National News, your three Ws. Wash your hands, wear your mask, watch your distance. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. Commencing with news from Region 1, UK Foreign Office proposal for amateur radio bands in BAT. The British Antarctic Territory, or BAT, is administered from London by the Polar Regions Department for the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office. They recently announced plans to administer an amateur radio licence for the Territory. No licence has been available for the past two years. A surprising feature about the proposal of the bands they plan to allocate It would have been expected they'd copy the amateur frequency schedule issued by the Falkland Islands Communications Regulator, who administered amateur licensing in the British Antarctic Territory prior to 2019. But instead, the Foreign Office have excluded many of the amateur and amateur satellite service allocations. Inexplicably, the Foreign Office proposal excludes a part of the 24 GHz band, 24.050 to 24.150 GHz, and also the entire amateur and amateur satellite service allocations at 2.4, 5, 10, 47, 76 gigahertz, etc. Germany permits the use of these bands at their New Meyer 3 Antarctic Research Station. For example, the 2.4 and 10 gigahertz bands are used by amateurs there for contacts via the QO100 amateur satellite transponders. Amateur radio is a vehicle for technology literacy. Chris, Zulu Sierra 6 Echo Zulu and Han Zulu Sierra 6 Alpha Kilo Victor have produced a paper, Amateur Radio is a Vehicle for Technology Literacy, which looks at the situation in Africa. Africa faces a shortage of technology proficient people who can develop and maintain our ICT infrastructure and drive innovation to facilitate manufacturing and services. Amateur Radio offers a vehicle for technology training that has reaped great rewards for many countries. The barriers to entry are continuously dropping. The article explains the potential of Amateur Radio for technology development, looks at the current state of Amateur Radio in Africa and suggests avenues that might be explored to allow wider access on the continent. Comreg to introduce a novice entry level, i.e. licence. Ireland currently only has a single class of amateur licence, but in consultation response document released December 17, the regulator Comreg says it will introduce a lower level. The response document makes use of the terms entry level and novice level as though they are interchangeable, but as far as SEPT is concerned, they mean completely different things, and it's unclear what Comreg mean when they use the word novice. SEPT entry level refers to a basic licence requiring about 8 to 10 hours of tuition. SEPT novice level is a much higher level licence that is equivalent to USA general or UK intermediate. 
In news from Region 2, Radio Club donates $10,000 to Centre of Hope in Ravenna. Portage County Amateur Radio Services has donated $10,471.76 to the Centre of Hope, a program of family and community services in the USA. The group has been raising funds for the Centre of Hope for 16 years, but this year's donation is the group's largest donation to date. The donations are collected from club members as well as the community and have made a significant impact on Portage County over the past years. In their December newsletter, PC ARS President Nick Wagner said, I'm proud to say that over the past 16 years, PC ARS has existed. Our total contribution to support our community in this way is over $67,000. Each year, the Centre of Hope helps hundreds of families in Portage County, Ohio, by providing hot meals five days a week as well as emergency groceries. Services are free of charge and dependent on the individual's income. And wrapping up this year's international news, from Region 3, New Zealand's National Society, NZART, has posted the following information. Conference forums. We're now calling on those attending the conference in 2022 to make contact if they can run a forum. By using the Contact Us link, send an email to register your interest. The location is the James Cook Grand Chancellor on the 11th and 12th of June 2022. Next year's conference will be run a week after Queen's Birthday weekend. It will be a two-day event with the ability to fly in and out with only a single night's accommodation for the Saturday if that suits people to do so. There will be no Sunday evening meal with the conference concluding at 3.30pm on the 12th of June 2022. I'd just like to take this opportunity to wish all our listeners a very Merry Christmas and safe and prosperous New Year 2022. For VK1 WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. Available on RF and on demand 24-7 from the wia.org.au website. Weird and wonderful. I'm John VK4JJW. 20 years from now, we might get a call from an alien. In 2017, a powerful radio transmission was aimed at exoplanet GJ273b, thought to be able to support life. Its message sent by the Alien Hunting Group, messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence International, contained instructions on how to understand Earthling math, music and time. If it lands on intelligent alien ears once it arrives in about a decade, ET now has our number. Space transmissions hoping to attract an alien response have been going out since 1962, when Soviet scientists sent a message in Morse code to the planet Venus in the first attempt at intergalactic communication. Even if our calls generate no response, it seems increasingly likely humanity will stumble upon life somewhere in the universe one of these days. Concerns over decades of unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, known more commonly as unidentified flying objects, UFOs, in our atmosphere, many cited by military personnel, have recently prompted politicians on both sides of the aisle to push for an official agency to handle UAP investigations. But are we prepared for an encounter of the third kind? The prospect of beating another civilization raises questions both captivating and concerning. How do we even communicate with an alien species, especially one that may not use language in a form that we can recognize and decipher? Will a meeting prompt mass hysteria? And what about strange alien diseases? And how might it affect our views about religion? Once contact was established, the next challenge would lie in making good conversation. Jones has a few suggestions for how to begin. Human and be would be the first word suggested in learning how to express. Then in turn, we could try to learn how they refer to themselves and how they express that they exist. How would they convey the equivalent of the English sentence, I am human? Ideally, if extraterrestrials are able to travel to us, we would do some sort of exchange program where they could observe us, then we could observe them in their daily life. 
On the basis of this mutual observation, we might be able to construct a number of ideas about what type of words to teach and learn. One issue will be whether we even want to communicate and give away our location without first ascertaining their culture. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there, and many thanks to Lynn, VK4SWE, for presenting the operational news last week in the Alara edition. Now, contest wise, 2022. January, the entire month, is the WIA Ross Hull VHF UHF Marathon Contest. WIA VHF UHF Field Day, Saturday 15 January through Sunday 16 January. John Moore Memorial Field Day. The JMMFD contest starts on the 19th of March and includes on the 20th of March. Harry Angel Memorial 80 minute sprint, Saturday 7th of May. VK Shires contest, 11th of June 2022. DX Window. VI3 Jam. December 29 and until January 7 is Victoria only Jamboree Vic Jam, including the amateur radio station with the special call sign of VI3JAM and one of their participants. And one of our news team is on the site and will report in a moment during special interest group news. Yes, it's called VK3GTV. The Commerce Island expedition that was to take place sometime between mid to end of January in 2022 has been postponed. The COVID-19 situation makes it unsafe for the team to travel now, but it should be able to take place sometime later in 2022. Danish Special Event Danish Road Amateurs will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of H.M. Margarith II, the Queen of Denmark's session to the throne by activating the special event station OZ5 OQ during the whole month of January 2022. Special award is available at cqrz.com. QSL via OZ1ACB, EQSL, or RELOTW. All QSOs will be confirmed via RELOTW and EQSL. Hungry HA. Special call HA21XMAS is QRV on all bands and modes until December 26. That, of course, is today. And EQSL via the operator's instructions. Members of the Saudi Association of Radio Amateurs, SARA, are on the air until December 28 as HZ-19SAT to celebrate the launch of a Saudi satellite. The significance of the call sign with 19 is that it has been 19 years since the Saudis launched their first CubeSat. QSL to HZ-1SIR. St. Kitts and Nevis, V4. Victor, WB0AA has been QRV as V4 stroke WB0AA from St. Kitts. IOTA NA-104, from December 22 to 29. Activity has been heard on 160 to 10 metres using CW and SSB. QSL to home call WB0AA. Thailand. Brad, VK2BY will be active as HS0ZNR in northeastern Thailand until the 21st of January. And as well as QSL and direct to VK2BY, you can also QSL via logbook of the world. Indonesia, 7B2C, 7B2E, 7B2T, 7B2H and 7B2O are QRV until end October 2022 to celebrate the Javanese Hindu Tsejo Temple that was built in 1475. Activities on the 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres using SSB and FT8. QSL via operator's instructions. The new year is going to be a good one for members of the Irish Radio Transmitter Society. Hams will be using the special call sign EI-90IRTS to mark the 90th anniversary of the founding of Ireland's National Society. Listen for the EI-90IRTS call sign throughout 2022. QSL via EI6AL. Before I leave this week, I hope that everybody's enjoying the Christmas weekend and have got through this somewhat crazy year of 2021 okay. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix, VK4FUQ, Inningham. Intruder Watch, the Enforcement Zone, Norway's National Amateur Radio Society, the NRRL, report they're working with communications regulator ENCOM to stop intruders operating in the 144 MHz band. A translation of the NRRL post reads, and I quote, By listening, logging, including bearings, 
we make it possible to identify the users and find the exact area in which they operate. This makes it easier for the authorities to devote resources to keeping our bands free of unwanted intruders. NRRL has been told that the two metre frequencies are used by users in eastern Norway who do not have a licence. We hope that radio amateurs and shortwave listeners have the opportunity to listen on the frequencies and log all intruders. The log should be sent to the NRRL's office, which will summarise this and work with NCOM to stop the intruders. And here in Region 3, don't forget, Peter Young, VK3MV, is the Region 3 IARUMS coordinator. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, welcome and Merry Christmas. First up, it's Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora, Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. The Netherlands Special Event. Lars, PH0NO, announced that he'll be active with the special call sign PG44FF to promote the Worldwide Flora and Fauna Award Program as well as the Dutch program PAFF beginning late 2021 through early 2022. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Astronomical. The American Space Agency, NASA, says a spacecraft has entered the Sun's outermost atmosphere for the first time. The Parker Solar Probe travelled through the solar atmosphere's outer edge, known as the corona, back in April, scientists announced this week. But they said it took some months to examine data from the spacecraft and to confirm the brilliant result. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, ATV. ISS Slow Scan TV abuzz now. The ARIS team will be supporting Slow Scan TV operations from the International Space Station during the period of December 26 to 31st. The transmissions should be available worldwide on 145.800 MHz FM and the planned SSTV mode is PD120. If your rig has selectable FM filters, try the wider filter for 25 kHz channel spacing. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Defence. Townsville Amateur Radio Club does Defence Welcome and Information Expo. The TARC will be involved with the 2022 Defence Welcome and Information Expo run by the Townsville Office of Defence Community Organisation North Queensland on Saturday the 12th of February at Murray Stadium from 10am. The club is hoping to demonstrate the hobby through a mixture of static, dynamic and interactive displays with members experienced in many facets of the hobby able to provide meaningful answers and guidance for those attending the expo. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, OC209. Agus, YB1TDL is now active as YB1TDL-8 from Karakalong Island in the Talod Islands, Indonesia and will be on the air until this coming Wednesday, December 29th. Activity will be on various HF bands using SSB and FT8. QSL via HA3JB, Direct, LOTW or Club Logs OQRS. No Bureau QSLs. It's not science fiction but radio fact that the Manic Monkeys team of radio operators made a 600km journey this month from Bangalore, India to Sao George Island, designated AS-177 by IOTA, activating the remote island for the first time. With a story he filed for Amateur Radio Newsline just this week, here's WIA News Editor Graham, VK4BB. It's not science fiction, but radio fact that the Manic Monkeys team of radio operators made a 600km journey this month from Bangalore, India, to Sao George Island, designated AS-177 by IOTA, activating the remote island for the first time. They'd gone in search of the fictional Lincoln Island that appears in Jules Verne's classic novels, but the adventurous hams with the call sign AT-7SJ were also in search of QSOs. Between December 3 and December 6, they logged 1,600 such contacts on SSB, CW and FT8 while camped in difficult terrain, according to team leader Madhu Prasad, VU3NPI. Madhu told Newsline of other discoveries and I quote, The island had mysterious propagation conditions. The signals would go up and down like the tide and mysteriously close abruptly on all bands with S9 noise, end quote. Madhu said the team had been landlocked in India for two years by the pandemic and was still grieving the loss of the team's Elma, Dev, VU2DEV, to cardiac arrest. 
Now they can proudly add this uninhabited, thickly forested island to their earlier activations of St Mary's Island, AS096, and Danish Cody Island, AS173. Madhu told Newsline the team unfortunately did not find mysterious Lincoln Island, nor did they locate the Aquaphone, the fictional wireless device used by Jules Verne's protagonist, Captain Nemo. Thanks, Graham, and it would seem that they're leaving that quest and Lincoln Island for 2022. Now on to Worldwide Special Interest Group's Radio Scouting. Literally, as you're listening to this, the Scout Radio and Electronic Service Unit of Victoria is busy setting up their amateur station at VicJam. Due to COVID restrictions during the planning stages of the event over the past two years, the Australian National Scout Jamboree, AJ 2022, was cancelled. However, around 5,000 scouts and leaders from all over Victoria will converge on Elmore in central Victoria from December 29th until January 7th for the Victoria-only Jamboree, Vic Jam, to participate in numerous on-site and off-site activities including the amateur radio station with the special call sign VI3JAM. The station will operate from 0900 to around 1900 daily on 80 through to 10 metres, plus 2 metres and 70 centimetre repeaters, echo link and DMR, with a full list of frequencies available in the text version of this WIA news broadcast. A highlight will be an amateur radio contact with the International Space Station, when some lucky scouts will be able to chat with the astronauts on board. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Yota. Spain and Norway seek ways to attract a younger generation of hams. Spain's National Amateur Radio Society, Union of Spanish Radio Amateurs, URE, is attempting to entice youth and youngsters to become interested in amateur radio. URE is offering free membership in the organisation and a free amateur radio licence manual. The organisation has framed amateur radio as the technological and experimental hobby that will hook you forever. Prospective young radio amateurs must be between 14 and 18 years old to qualify for a free URE membership and a licence manual to prepare for the exam and obtain an operator licence. URE says the manual explains the basics of electricity, electronics and telecommunications, as well as the regulatory structure. Those aged under 25 can qualify for a half-price membership once they've obtained their radio amateur licence and become full URE members. Meanwhile in Norway, as we've reported previously here on WIA National News, they're looking to introduce a new 10-watt entry-level licence that will enable 12- and 13-year-olds to get started building simple transmitters and receivers. The Research Council of Norway has granted 1 million kroner to support the Radio Communications Technology for Young People project aimed at recruiting young radio amateurs. And that wraps it up for me for the weekend for this year. I'm Col, VK3GTV, wishing everyone the best for the remainder of the festive season. Stay safe, and I look forward to catching up again in 2022. Across Australia from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In Northern Victoria, it can be heard on VK3 RMP 147.275 at 10am on Sundays. I'm Matthew McKernan, VK3 MJM, on behalf of Scouts Victoria, VK3 SCM. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions, www.wia.org.au. Wrapping up WIA National News for the good year 2021, on the social scene, in 2021, one event, and it happens tomorrow. Yes, it's the inaugural Warrnambool Hamfest, tomorrow, Monday, 27th of December, and entry to the public is 10 a.m. Then in 2022, VK7, Reist Open Day, Sunday, January 30, 11am. VK3 at Spark Rosebud Radio Fest, February 13 at 9.30am. VK4, Red Fest, Saturday, April 9. And the Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Sir Convention at Mount Gambier. That's the Queen's Birthday weekend in June. Now, we won't see you till next year. So in the meantime... Wash your hands, wear your mask, and watch your distance. I'm Graham VK4BB. Walk softly.
from Australia. This has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.